Hi, my name is Ingrid Anna, and welcome to the Divine Femme Money Show. It's the juiciest conversation for women about money, power, sensuality, relationships, and business. In this bonus episode, Helping Women Rise and Make Money, we have a delicious and deep Q&A with our Clubhouse community where they got to ask me anything, and it was on fire, and I had the time of my life. I cannot wait for you to hear this episode. We cover why it's imperative that women be financially independent, period. The strategies to scale an online business, how to get to market fast and generate the cash flow that you deserve and desire, and the healing women need to rise into radical riches. And so with no further ado, get ready to listen to the conversation of a lifetime. You can find the Divine Fam Money Show at your favorite podcast provider and at ingridarna.com slash show. Yeah, so let's get this show in the road. Yes, we help women make a lot more money, obviously, online. Um, I've been doing this for about six years now, solidly. My previous experience was working in corporate America in advertising, and I was pretty over it. I was done working with the man, and I actually then founded a company in the United States and uh, lost that all due to fraud and had to come home and start this business off from scratch. So it's been a big journey and um, it's been actually absolutely priceless and profound and more than just helping women make money online, it's also about creating a really deep sense of personal power, uh, embodiment, alignment, uh, nourishment, and also it's really, you know, at the heart of it, it's about serving. Um, But unfortunately, so many women are trapped in serving with sacrifice so we really sort of focused on ensuring that women uh, do great work in the world but that they're doing it in a way that doesn't sacrifice or sort of what we call pay penance in terms of ruining their health relationships because they're trapped in over giving and underselling their services and hi, my name is Emily Diamond. I wanted to introduce myself here. I'm part of the uh, Ingrid Arna team. Thank you, Dan, for uh, joining us here today. I'm going to be the moderator for the room. I wanted to welcome everybody in. I see we've got Tylene, Brittany, Michelle, Karen, Zelda, Melissa, Melissa. We've got double Melissa. Welcome, welcome, Alessandra, Ashley, um, Jeremiah, Angie, Michaela. Big shout out to you all. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Ava. Thank you for all for joining us. I'll let you know a little bit about the rules for the room today. We're going to invite people up. Just raise your hand to ask any questions that you've got for Ingrid and the panel. And we are going to answer your questions. We're ultimately about getting women as quickly as possible to marketplace, as quick as possible to market with your business model. Uh, like Jen said, um, no sacrifice in terms of your um, ability to speak out, claim your power, deliver your services in the world, be visible, be seen. So if you want to do some hand raising, let's get some hands raised and let's start asking some questions about your service-based businesses and how to get more visible online. Okay, well, reset the room every couple of minutes as well. So everyone has a chance to ask their questions and a chance to speak. And Ingrid, is there anything else you want to let us know about what do you think are the biggest things uh, in for women in 2021 with this changed economy? What do they need to be paying attention to right now? Well, being online is obviously vital. And then making sure, I was just speaking to a client actually, and then making sure that she's working with a doctor who's wanting to come online. And really at the end of the day, having a package, having something that you can really offer the marketplace that obviously they really need. I always say that every woman can get rich, but you've got to have something of absolutely high value to offer your clients. So the whole packaging model that we teach is really about creating your own intellectual process. So looking at the problem that your core clients, that your niche has, and really spending adequate time developing a process to take someone from pain you know, to salvation or from that problem to solution. So once you have that in place, it really brings in a deep level of clarity around what you offer, who you're serving and how you deeply help people. And I think a big part of what, where I see a lot of women struggle is they don't know what to put in their packages. Um, then when they've actually crafted that, the next place is place, sorry, or point is visibility. So making sure that we're owning our voices, clearly articulating and communicating the power of the work and how we can deeply serve people. Because I see so many talented, gifted women 
who are hiding online and not really speaking up or if they are speaking up about their work, not doing it in a way yet that their audience and their dream client can really understand uh, the value of their work and what they're doing. So really getting very comfortable with the languaging that we need to use in order for your ideal client to, like, as soon as they see you pretty much online, they know exactly what you do and how you can help them. And I think if you look at the feminine and the wound of feminine is that we've often been told to shut down, don't speak up too much, don't honor your work, God forbid you actually act like you like yourself. Uh, I remember when I first started, I was so afraid of pitching. Uh, I was so afraid of um, being seen as among the hungry cow, <laughs> I used to say. Um, so I would really undermine the value of my work and I would give and give and give and give and yet have very little to receive. So I had to really clear the way, release a lot of my uh, money karma drama, my self-worth issues to really then begin to uh, not only package up my brilliance, but then be able to communicate in a way, reach thousands of people online and do it in a way that is scalable, soulful, and that really adds significance and value to people's lives. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Okay, cool. And then we've got this new um, kind of drive to have women online and um, female leadership, we've had all these just recent, particularly in Australia, everyone, we're Aussies, we live in Australia, we've just had all these mass marches of women speaking out and taking to the streets in terms of gender equality, earning equality, income equality. And I wanted to ask you about your perspective around how financial equity applies to women's social power, Ingrid. And also, we're taking raised hands, so anyone who wants to raise their hand, come up on stage, ask us a question, we are here. Mm. A really good question emily and we have so if there's been a lot of you know obviously there's an epidemic at the moment we talk about a lot about the pandemic of covid uh, a big issue that we don't often talk about in a bigger way is the toxicity and poison of violence against women so i believe that financial power is vitally important to our social and political power it's all tied in together because otherwise unless we have financial security that always starts with a sense of you don't have financial sovereignty without personal sovereignty. So as a, woman, as a woman rises up, as a woman claims that for herself, it's actually, she's really claiming the value of herself as a deep level of self-love and autonomy. Uh, if, you know, I, even if you've got a rich husband or a rich boyfriend, you always want your own money <laughs> because you don't want to be owned or beholden to anyone. And that's when these very codependent, manipulative relationships come into play if a woman doesn't have her own financial means. So, you know, we help women scale six, seven figure businesses and beyond that. However, I'm even just talking about having the ability to make an extra $500,000 a week starts to uh, give a woman choices. Choice is so important. So um, we, we have a lot of issues at the moment around, you know, rape and abuse in politics. Um, all the, all, there's so many, um, so many issues that we're looking at dealing with at the moment. But I really, really believe with women coming into their sense of power and ownership, they can make money, they can stand on their own terms, they can buy their own homes, they can have their own investment properties, they can make sure that, you know, one of the fastest growing rates of homelessness in Australia is women who have married, raised children, and then um, given up their careers. Now, being a mother myself and raising a family uh, and also building a company from scratch over six years, um, basically when I gave birth to my daughter, I really that's when I really started to change the game for myself because I wanted to be a role model to her and actually not just sort of talk the talk, but walk the talk. And I knew I needed to make radical changes in the way I was running my business. Um, but I feel that that has deeply changed, um, you know, the way that I am like influencing my child, influencing my peers, because, you know, I've been trapped in relationships myself that were not exactly healthy and having my own sense of financial power, uh, has, is, gives me choices. So I think it's really important for every woman to claim that for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now that we have set the tone for the room, <laughs> woo, welcome everybody. Please ping your friends in. I see we have all these beautiful women and our beautiful activist men here. Thank you, gorgeous men, for being here. Uh, we've got 
Ingrid, myself, Chris on the panel, we've got Dana, uh, Daniel here being a phenomenal uh, mod, one of the founders of the What It Takes to Run a Million Dollar Business uh, Room uh, Club on Clubhouse, the winner of the longest running um, Club on Clubhouse, a lot of records broken with Dan and with Kate, and we've got Jeremiah and Angie who've come up to speak, and Jeremiah, you are first, so if you'd like to unmute yourself, uh, you'll ask your question, you'll say, hey Ingrid, my question is, ask your question, and when you're finished speaking, if you could then just say, please, you know, I'm done speaking, so we know to not jump in. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing me up here. Um, Ingrid, uh, the question that I have for you is, um, what was it like in your first win that made oh. you confident that you were doing the right thing? Oh my gosh, that's a great question, Jeremiah. Oh, as I was saying before, I gave birth to my daughter and I was just like, I was pretty broke actually. I was in hospital and I was still, you know, speaking to clients and I already delivered on the service and I just thought this is ridiculous. I'm absolutely either I'm going to quit and have to go back to a job or I'm going to figure this out. And um, I was just I was, you know, I, I sort of as I said previously, I'd lost a company in New York, so I uh, due to fraud. Uh, it was a big life lesson for me. Um, and I lost a lot of self-confidence. Um, but prior to that, I'd worked in corporate advertising. As I said, then I raised capital. I had a clothing line called Body Love. Um, that sort of fell to pieces. I came home and started from scratch, which actually now in hindsight, even though it was very debilitating and I felt like a complete and utter loser, um, when that happened, it's, it really taught me so much about myself, about what I'd never do again in terms of capital raising and investors and whatnot. Um, and then my fear-based consciousness that even led into that. And I felt very, very needy and I needed this person. So I sat, I remember the day I sat down and I was charging about a hundred dollars an hour. And then I would still deliver, you know, over deliver on the, you know, it was just ridiculous. I might've thought it was a great win when I sold a thousand dollar package. Uh, my clients were thriving and as I said, I was making peanuts. So I wrote my very first, I was like, Ingrid, oh my God, you used to sell and pitch TV shows in America. Uh, I had previously had an agent uh, at ICM, one of the largest agencies in Hollywood pitching and selling TV shows. And I thought, you know, you know how to write a frigging proposal. So I sat down, I started praying and chanting and I thought, okay, what am I going to craft here? So I came up with an, a great title, a tagline. I began to create a curriculum. So at the beginning of this chat, I talked about going from, you know, really identifying what is the pain, what is the prob problem that I'm solving, and then mapping out a clear journey for the client to go on to the solution, to the transformation. So looking at, I sometimes also talk about trauma to transformation. So then creating very congruent divine steps, concrete steps for a client to then follow so that they can get the outcome that they're paying me for, right? So I did that, I crafted this offer, and I actually had two. I crafted a business offer and I crafted a healing like a body healing offer based on my whole all my studies with mind and body medicine. I'd study nutrition, um, shamanism, you name it. I've studied all these different modalities. So I had a beautiful client um, turn up, a beautiful woman who'd been referred. I studied eating psychology with an amazing uh, New York Times bestselling author. Previously had a lot of eating disorder issues myself. So I really wanted to go and learn how do I heal my own body? Um, I crafted a beautiful process, um, also called Body Love Diet, diet standing for daily intuitive energy transformation. And so I began to really map out this process. And then my mentor, Mark David, who wrote a beautiful book called The Slow Down Diet, really talking about nourishing the central nervous system, um, setting up a relaxation response in the body rather than, you know, so many people suffer from adrenal issues, exhaustion. So I crafted this whole process around that and he referred me to a beautiful woman actually who'd been suffering um, from a chronic eating disorder. She wanted to also work on her business but wasn't ready. And long story short, she came in, we had a conversation and you know, when you have a conversation with someone and you begin to manifest these people who really want to work with you, if you have a you know, average offer or you have an offer that doesn't really value you and your work, then you're, you know, they're only going to buy the cheaper sort of average offer or whatever. So I crafted a $6,000 offer at the time it was huge for me. I think it was like a 12 week immersion. Um, I wasn't that great at sales at the time. I didn't understand about pay in fulls and payment plans and all that kind of stuff. And she just happened to want to pay me in full. And 
So she paid me $6,000 and she paid me, bang, it came into my bank account and I was like, oh my God, okay, you know, this is like, I felt great. I was excited about the work. I really wanted to help her. And we ended up going on a two year journey together. So she started off with Body Love. We did VIP intensives and initiations and I started creating more and more and more and more people came in. So from an energetic standpoint or a deliberate standpoint, I really believe that once you get that offer down, you begin to sort of manifest and it's like you're prepared. You're saying to the universe, you're saying to life, you're saying to your audience, I am ready. I am serious. I'm here to serve. But you are putting a price that values not you per se. I always say you're not a prostitute. You're not putting a value on yourself (laughs) because you're priceless. You're putting a value on the price of the transformation. So that client went on and spent tens of thousands of dollars working with me over two years, radically changed her life. And that was sort of the beginning. And it felt incredible. I felt so good about the work. I felt incredible about the experience that this beautiful client was having. She'd actually lost um, two parents to cancer. um, And she was like an only child. So she had so much trauma. This beautiful woman even came to stay at my home. And I started doing just this really deep, intensive level of work. That type of work, which is beautiful, and I can still do it here and there, isn't obviously scalable. So my business model, and anyone can ask me any question about how I sell now, I have a, we have a close to $4 million annual turnover. We're set to radically grow that at the moment due to uh, what we're doing with our marketing efforts. Um, We're really ready for massive scale. So um, I'm happy to answer any question about what I've done since then. But that was, does that answer your question, Jeremiah? Yeah, it's dreamy of it. Thank you so much. That was so valuable. Sorry. <laughs> I do I do tend to go on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremiah. And absolutely, Ingrid, we want the juice. We want all the juicy details. So thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, and I was like thinking, Ingrid, was it kind of like you've gone through all of that loss, right? So someone defrauded your company. Yes starting this whole kind of domino effect of everything you've built falling apart. And I know we've got people in this room, people like Sam and stuff, and people like Dan, where you can literally watch a business model or a career seem to just literally crumble in front mm. of your very eyes. Mm. Um, I want to know, was it a healing experience when she invested with you? Oh, yeah, it was healing for us both. And I think that's what we have to also realize with sales as well. Like if you do have service at the heart of your work and you really do care um, about this level of kind of contribution and service that you're bringing to a client it's also incredibly transformational for them to invest like people are praying for you right and so when you when they find someone that really does honor their word and deliver on the service it's it's healing for both but for me personally emily and it's a great question it was profound because I'd been caught in so much scarcity. My concept of like how to package up myself. I mean, I really didn't even, I wasn't packaging up my services. I was doing pretty much one-on-one work and driving myself into the ground. So um, it was profoundly healing and it really opened up the doorway. Uh, I remember, I think I made about $60,000. I just kept selling clients. So I sold about another 10 spots into that program. And then I started doing more business coaching as well. So I had two key offers, one business. And then I launched my very first uh, ever mastermind. And at that time it was called CEO Diva Business School. Most of my clients were coming through organic my organic social media marketing so just and i i'm old school (laughs) i only got on instagram a little while ago and i i've now hired a social media team to help me with that but really it was facebook running my facebook group promoting there doing uh, lots of live streaming inviting people into calls very basic um, but these sort of basic marketing measures if you get them right uh, and really at the end of the day the whole uh, focus of the work that i do and that i teach in terms of social media um, marketing is really really comes down to what i call currency of connection so connecting with your audience having deep level conversations through the power mainly of video is has been my kind of golden ticket um so i then went into running traffic and crafting and building my very first funnel uh but the majority of my sales initially as i said came through facebook and then init- and then my free facebook group my free facebook group now has twenty seven thousand members but i was doing really well i think i was reach i reached about 
my first 200 grand pretty much all just through uh, organic messaging. And then, as I said, I launched my very first uh, funnel. Um, it was called Sacred Money Miracle. And it was teaching women how to package up and sell high end. And it was an eight part video series. And that led people into getting on a call with me. And initially I did all my own calls. Um, I didn't even have a sales page at the time. I just had my offer and it was called CEO Diva Business School, which is now converted into Six Figure Diva. It's my um, where, where we teach people to go from zero to six figures. And then from six to seven figures is another product that we have called Seven Figure Diva. So I launched with this CEO Diva Business School. I had no content crafted yet. I had a, a very well mapped out curriculum. I launched a Sacred Money Miracle. I spent $10,000 in ads. I didn't know if it was gonna work. My husband had just recently lost a job. He was an engineer who now works with me. Chris, you'll see him here as well. And we were petrified. <laughs> is this going to work? Um, I did have, you know, a decent amount of experience in marketing. So I kind of knew that it would hopefully work, but there were a lot of fears, you know, you know we, were gonna, we were both going to be like, um, so we were eating, I think, chicken wings at the time and really what, you know, Petrify was it going to work, but we really put that level of service. I crafted these eight videos. I gave big, I did a follow along workbook with it. And that law of generosity, reciprocity, really not being afraid of, oh, if I give too much, am I, are people just going to not want to work with me? And, um, but really just being generous of heart and then leading people into a conversation was just, it was so beautiful. And I had 60 people over literally, I think it was 30 days. I said, I think I say I made my first 150K from that funnel in about 90 days. It took me probably about six weeks to get it together to build, but the sales came in really quickly. And 60 people booked calls from that 10K ad spend. And then 40 people, I think, blew me off or didn't say yes. <laughs> and um, 20 people said yes. And at that point, I had three different tiers of that offer. I had a 5K, a 10 k and a 15k and i was selling it all through i don't know, i think it was i can't remember it was zoom or skype at the time uh, i wasn't doing phone call sales calls i was doing uh zoom i think it was maybe or skype and um, i had my pdf offer document and i sold it all through that and then i launched the ceo diva business school and that was the beginning of teaching to groups in a big group format and I was absolutely petrified because I was very, very comfortable doing one-on-one -on -one deep level work and strategy and really showing my true self and um, going deep and being fierce and being on fire. But then doing that to a group, I was absolutely beside myself. And I remember when I went to do my very first webinar, I was so scared that I twisted my ankle so badly that my husband had to carry me home. And I was like, oh my God. And I did my very first webinar and that was the next level of just absolutely like getting massive traffic coming in and people buying directly from webinars, which was just awesome selling 12K offers directly from webinars, no sales call. Um, but every step of the way, I have pretty much had huge amounts of fear. <laughs> um, but then you go to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. So... Phenomenal. Okay. So do you, want me to do you want me to talk about the next? So that's sort of my first level where I made my first 150K and I sold those spots in a group format to CEO Diva Business School. And now what we teach a lot, and Emily helps you with this too, but we teach ongoing enrollment where uh, we don't teach, like have open and close carts. We don't do launches. I remember starting to run ad traffic and set up my whole marketing strategy. And I had a big publicist in New York reach out to me and say, Ingrid, you know, I love your launch. And I said, oh my God, that's, it's not a launch. It's just how I run my business. So the way that we do things now, which has saved my sanity and saved my soul on so many different levels, um, is it's, I feel the launch method is pretty much kind of dead. It can work for a while, but for us, we um, have a process whereby if you see me, hear me, see one of my ads, we can take on clients. I can take on 10 clients today. I could take on another 10 clients tomorrow. We don't do this open and close cart. So we have this ongoing enrollment process. And that's what we teach because we can help people literally without creating any content first off, sell uh, a process like that pretty much off the bat without having to invest a lot of money to start launching group high-end offers. 
uh, without doing these extensive launches. So that's kind of the core um, model that we love to teach because it's, easy to get to market quickly you don't have to spend months and months creating curriculums you don't have that pressure of having to push 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 hard to get sales in the door that week if you've got a kid that's sick or you're having an off week or um, you know you've got a presidential election and you're running god a launch forbid you would want to have a week off and have a holiday oh my god exactly it's just exhausting so we have leads and new set and people coming in constantly through our marketing process, we have two core funnels at the moment. We have we we've had many different funnels. Uh, we do do challenges and things like that, and we do really nurture our audience through my free group with free live content. We have a new podcast. Uh, when we do our podcast, for example, we also do it live on video in our group to constantly be nurturing and engaging our group and offering epic, you know, goodness into our community. Um, I always say, you know, you have to have that trust before you have a transaction, you know. So we're constantly looking at how we can add value to our community so we can solidify ourselves as market leaders and then have people cut. By the time someone's getting on a call with us or they got to get on a call with you, you guys, you want to ensure that you're deeply nurturing your audience. So we've tried to really, um, we have a lot of live content we do, but we've also automated a lot of that. Recently, I had a big surgery big operation and you know it really threw me out for a long time and having you know, as I was healing and recovering and prior to that I had a hemorrhage and it was a whole big mess so having things like that set up where you don't have to constantly be pushing your marketing efforts because you've automated it is really I think key to having a soulful scalable business where you're not driving yourself into the ground mm. Amen. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge we've got our other wonderful moderators here. Sandy, thank you for joining us. The Pivot Queen, Kate Hancock, one of the Hi, everybody. It takes to run a $1 million Hi, business. Sam. <laughs> okay. And then we've got the gorgeous Angie who's come up to the stage to ask her question. So, Angie, if you would like to unmute yourself, ask your question and uh, start with me. My question is Hi, Ingrid. Um, so my question is, I have done so much work, oh, so many courses and mm. um, so much work on myself, and yet I'm still facing this terror barrier and this absolute fear of, of really putting myself out there, and that, of course, is preventing me from making money. Yes. I have the wealthy partner, so I don't have to make money, but as you made it very clear, you still want your own money because you don't want to be... I, I just know that there are times where I think, man, I'd love to go for a girls' weekend away, mm. but I've got to ask permission and have someone fund it. And so, you know, just things like that. I really want to make my own money and a lot of it. And I know I have a lot to offer, but I'm just constantly faced with that barrier. And I love what you said before about how, how much fear you had. <laughs> But you did it anyway to the point where you sprained your ankle. Um, I still, I was like, if I'm gonna wear, zip, if I'm gonna be in bed with zip cream on my face and my glasses on, where I look unrecognizable when I, apart from you know, compared to when I'm all glammed up, I'm doing this because I'm a 38 year old woman and I know I'm in sabotage. Um, I think with the, with the one thing that I'd ask you, Angie, and thank you for sharing that and being so open. I love it. Um, the other part of the money thing that I, and I know that this is. Um, true for you is it it's about the money but it's also I think every soul every human being here um, on the planet pretty much um, if we're conscious and aware of it is that we're here to help and sharing and um, support others and also express ourselves so a big part of um, you know monetizing that is beautiful and we want to make money and it's also I think a, a, your, part of your soul journey Angie is to be a fully you know, like realized woman who is there to really express herself and expand herself. So I think I'd also like to ask you, you know, what is the core fear there and the terror there around becoming more visible and actually doing this for real for yourself? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think it's possibly the fear of success because I feel as though when I do get myself out there, mm -hmm. that this is going to happen really quickly. And I think, number one, fear of failure, 
and number two, yeah. five, six, I yes and I get that and I've had that too and I think it's interesting because then we're sort of part of us wants it and part of us doesn't want it to some degree like we're fighting against ourselves so I just get you to take a moment to relax into your body and maybe even put a hand everyone can do this together put a hand on your heart and a hand on your womb space or for a guy on your sacral chakra and and just take a moment to Feel into what it would be like to have whatever it is, like a half a million, a million, it might be an eight-figure business, whatever it is you're desiring and that you're deeply supported. You're doing great work in the world. People are just so grateful for you. You feel you feel fully expressed. You're living free. You have your own money, but you're also just loving the work that you're doing. You're contributing so deeply and you just feel really aligned and at peace and turned on and activated because of the work that you're doing. Let's take a moment to go there and feel into that. Like, What if it was just magical? What if it was beautiful? What if it was just so divine? Because the thing is that when you get the right support and when you have the right structure and when you start taking the steps forward to do it, there's always but there's always a next step in, in an entrepreneurial journey. And if you come into a place of groundedness and faith that you will be supported and you'll get there and you'll it, it's going to be so sacred and divine for you, it's all going to unfold. Like you know, I think the fears that we have, some of it's, they're almost sort of contorted and twisted, and there's so much illusion and so much story. So. Yeah, just take a moment and feel into what it would be like to have it all that you're desiring with ease, love, grace, and deep support. So Angie, what would you, if you, if it was all just going to be beautiful and expansive and divine and you were going to able, you'd be able to have the financial freedom and that personal autonomy, um, you'd be able to go on lush weekends with your girlfriends of your own choice and decision without having to ask for permission what choices would you be making now around your business <laughs> um i would just be going for it yeah and I, I think i think part of my my fear is that um because i know that i'm holding back because of my partner because i need because he's financially supporting i hold back to make sure that he's happy and I'm not stepping out of mm-hmm. his idea of what I should be. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting so, that I, I can relate and I can, yeah, but the thing is, have you talked to him about it? Have you have you shared your, I'm um, having a heart-to-heart conversation about it. Have you shared that with him? I have. Um, the part, and he's mostly okay with it, but the part that he struggles with is that I used to be, in the sex industry and so for him when that comes out that's the part that's going to be an issue for him yet that is part of my story and who i am so what is the work that you want to do now do you know what in what sort of is it to do with sexual trauma healing manifestate what do you know even where you really want to take your work now yeah so it's life coaching Mm -hmm. um with tltp so focusing on anxiety and depression okay trauma okay so it just seems like he's got a fear or a wound around you potentially even maybe leaving him. Like if you come into your power, maybe you won't need him as much because even though you're not working in, in, in the sex trade and there's no judgment there whatsoever, there's still a thing around the, the his around your, your power. Um, so it may not be around so much the sexual power, but it's around your financial power and your autonomy. So he obviously has a wound Uh, which is beautiful that you've been able to talk about it. It's beautiful that he's even been able to open up in that way. And it just, it could be such a beautiful healing opportunity for you both to just continue to keep sharing. Your relationship is evolving. All relationships either evolve or they usually disintegrate on some level where the people stay together and just put up with it or they decide that they're going to both evolve together. So you're in this beautiful, it seems like you both really obviously love and care for each other. And it's just about continually having these beautiful uh, conversations. But the choice that you have to make at the end of the day, Angie, is that you know, you're already making it by saying you don't want to hold yourself back in order to kind of save the relationship. 
the relationship will either morph and change as you morph and change and it absolutely can i can tell you that my marriage over six years has had to really grow and change and evolve and we work together his chris is here with me um and um it takes like just love and connection and the communication that you guys are having as you would know but your work sounds incredibly powerful and the other thing that where i think is so beautiful where I was saying like flipping the switch on to well what what if it was even better between you two Angie I think often we go into the loss like what if something breaks or it, it's not going to work but what if it actually becomes better yeah wow that's exciting yeah <laughs> right yeah that would be beautiful and I don't know if that's possible but that would be beautiful it's always possible when the other yeah. person you know it has to be a co-creation obviously as you know Angie like yeah. they have to be willing um, but I think for you, I think just allowing yourself to do it now and like giving yourself full permission and it doesn't have to be, and you're saying it's going to happen, it's going to come quickly, <laughs> um, like a very powerful orgasm. Um, but um, and you've got that energy, I can feel your energy. Uh, but there's just something around just being gentle with it, with yourself and with him would be, I think, a really beautiful thing as well bring in some gen just gentleness and just calming it all down and being really grounded with it all. Does that make any sense to you? That makes so much sense. I really mm. appreciate that. Ingrid. My thank pleasure. So and much. thank you for sharing your gorgeous. And I love the work and I love the work that you're doing. Thank it's you so for important. Thank you. The world needs more Angie's. Thank you. Yes. You're phenomenal. Okay, so welcome to the What It Takes to Run a $1 Million Business Club. We're in the Helping Women Rise and Make More Money in 2021. Coach and Go Rich, take your beautiful, sacred work to the world, women. It is time for us all. I want to thank the mods, ping your beautiful community and bring them into the room to share and ask questions. We've got the fabulous Suzanne who has here waiting to ask her questions. Suzanne, if you could unmute yourself, please, and start with Ingrid. My question is, we'll get you up onto stage and we'll get some more questions answered. And if Suzanne, oh, there she is, great. Hello, thank you so much for um, letting me up on stage. Um, my question is, it's actually not about making money. Um, I have I'm actually from Germany, so if my uh, English is not that good, I'm sorry. Um, I have an Instagram page uh, for young women where we want to support them in living a self-determined and independent life. Um, we want to we want to create a community. Suzanne, where, Suzanne, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, darling, but you um, is it possible to speak up a little bit more? Oh yes, of course. <laughs> Can you hear me better now? Yes, a little Can bit. You hear me better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I have, uh, with my best friend, we have a page on Instagram for young women where uh, we want to support them in living a self-determined and independent life. We want to rise a community, we want to be a communi community where we can uh, rise together. And my question is, um, I have the problem that I have so much to say and I have so many information that I want to share with the people, but we don't have um, very much um, reach. Like we have like 200 followers, and I um, I have already published some information, but I feel that the people that follow us are not completely receptive because they're not like uh, they don't understand the substance of mm -hmm. what we're talking about and i wanted to ask my question is how should we organize our content without showering people with information yes that's a very good question suzanne and congratulations for building uh your community get there on instagram i think yes, really I looking at well what is your core message you know really understanding and articulating clearly what do you stand for so if you wanted to answer that now like what what does your movement is it like a movement that you're creating here um yes uh my friend and i uh we're working in e-commerce and uh, like for almost two years now since we're 18 and uh, often we didn't feel like we were being taken seriously or we, okay and, and that's and, and then we didn't feel strong enough and we 
we learn how to take our lives into our own hands by those experiences and we want to build a community uh, with a lot of women mm -hmm. um, so we can make a movement so this doesn't happen again that women are not taken seriously in what they do just because they're a woman okay so i think it's really like deciding do you have a core name for your movement uh, it's uh, w well it's actually we're, we called it the women's empire okay women's empire okay so I think you want to look at, you know, what are we really standing for and then chunking down the content and then really working out how well, how are you going to deliver it? So I think Instagram is great. Uh, I'm not, I don't do maybe enough on Instagram. I don't think you need to be on every single platform in order to, um, I mean, do you want to monetize? I mean, you said it's not about money. Do you want to monetize this brand as well? Or are you sort of focusing more on e-commerce and just making this a movement that's not yeah. monetized? Well, it's actually, um, at first we want, you know, like build up an organic reach, like without marketing or anything. And then in one or two years, we thought that if we have enough reach, maybe we could um, like create a coaching, like mindset coaching, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe sell it on, on our platform. Okay. But so like a woman's that. you say it's called the woman's um, the woman's empire initiative or something like that so it's a woman's empire yes. i think though with that it's very even the word you know empire it's very quite business related which does sort of then link into e-commerce and this and that but i think um it's already kind of got a it's very specific it seems to like entrepreneurs or women wanting to be entrepreneurs but you're also talking yes. about developing confidence um you know all that sort of things that i've been also talking about today so i think you don't have to take two years to monetize it i think you know we're talking about getting to market quickly so i think you could have part of it you know it is a movement but i want to i would be asking you to look at your products you don't have to shower people with constant um content but i i love um delivering you know challenges and you know doing three day events and five days events of, uh, of of content um instagram yes you're putting up little bits and pieces and, and whatnot that's why i love having a free facebook group um and inviting people from instagram to my facebook group because every time you're on there you'll get you know people are getting notified and you're able to create an incredible movement and community in that vortex right i call it like a vortex it's an energy space um, but I think you've got to decide whether you want to monetize it now or within two years, like in two years time, you can start monetizing and helping women, uh, in your space, literally in the next few weeks, if you wanted to. So I, I don't really understand your, I think you, I think you, the way that you're speaking is like, oh, when we get like, we've only got 200 followers. Well, if you had 200 people in also your free Facebook group and started to actually have a product there to sell, um, you could go into more money and then you can expand your reach because more people are going to be talking about you. And I know, and then, um, and inviting people into that community and then you're going to be serving people and you can monetize the brand. That's how I'd be going. I mean, that's how I would be, be looking at it. Um, in terms of like really answering your question in terms of content, whenever I'm thinking of content creation, I'm always usually working from, well, what is my product? And who, who, what am I, what am I doing? Who am I serving? What is my product? Uh, because the product offers like such a huge transformation. It's the, it is the service. It is how people get the outcome that they're looking for. I can do free content and really create massive waves and help people deeply. But the paid content that you're going to produce is going to be where the massive transformation comes. So when I'm creating content, I'm always working backwards from the product. So that I always start pretty much with who am I serving? What product am I, um, I'm sorry, what problem am I solving? And what's my core product, my program or my course? And then I start then developing content based on the journey that I want to take someone on. So it's all I would, so I would do it a little bit differently. If I was, if I was in your shoes, I'd be looking at what is the product we want to birth with this movement? You know, what is the journey that we're going to take people on over, say, a 90 day period of time or a six month period of time? And then your content is going to be in real congruence with, you know, your whole brand, your brand identity, the movement that you're creating, but also then that monetization structure. So, for example, if I'm selling, say, my product, Six Figure Diva, 
Um, I would, I might launch a challenge called the Six Figure Diva Challenge. You know. Um, three days to map out your high ticket offer and get more clients than you ever have before. Like if there's a whole journey towards leading someone into then becoming a client, becoming a student, and then us helping them, you know, get the result that they're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not, I don't really, I'm sorry. I just don't really, I don't really think my brain in non monetization, like I'm going to monetize in two years. I think about monetizing in two weeks. I just, does that make any sense? <laughs> I, I, my brain can't go there. Um, I, I think it's just because um, we're like new to this. And, yes. Um, we never thought that we would maybe, you know, uh, may, like create a coaching for something. Yes. And that idea just came up like a few weeks ago. Yes. And, um, but, but I get your point and, I, and that really helped me right now. Right. Because I think that we can start much 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 sooner yes for example if you had 200 people on instagram and they came over to your free facebook group suzanne and you was and you even just sold your first 10 spots at say two thousand dollars that's twenty thousand dollars sales and then you keep building from there and building from there and i know it is monetization but you have to everyone has to really understand i know that you guys do but like you can't have the influence and the reach that we want to have without, I think, the solid uh, monetization framework. So rather than it taking, you know, a huge, like long period of time and you can start doing it literally now. Absolutely. And most people really need you. They, they want the, when people really get what you're doing and they and they have a real need for it, they actually want to invest. They want to invest. So it's like it's a service, uh, you're in service and you're actually doing a service by actually having that process for them to go through. Does that make sense, Suzanne? So waiting, it's sort of like not in service because they need the, they need the process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. <laughs> you really helped me a lot. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we'll do a quick little reset of the room welcome to what it takes to one uh, to run a one million dollar business club everybody in the club we are in the phenomenal helping women rise and make money in 2021 let's coach and grow rich suzanne you are the perfect example of what we are talking about which is let's get you to market let's work out what your value is that you can bring to the market that people want to pay you for and like Ingrid was saying like let's get in straight away thank you for the clap Dana. for anyone who doesn't know how to clap on clubhouse mm. it's where you mute and unmute your microphone and you do these little flashing mics and that is a round of applause <laughs> in clubhouse okay um so thank you to our beautiful moderators i see we've got the phenomenal hazel uh who's actually a client here as well hello hazel thank you for joining us hi ladies so good to hear your voice i love you oh, oh hey hazel oh it's you beauty how are you I'm um, I'm great. I've been a little radio silent on, on in the in the group and the program that you have, but I read everything and I love everything that you share. And I've had so many breakthroughs. It's been really amazing. Great, darling. I I get very inspired by seeing you fly around around the world. I'm like, what is that woman having? I'll have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> You are. I love it. I love seeing you shine. It's beautiful. And I'm glad that you've had wonderful breakthroughs. Uh, well, I would like to update you. So if, if this is um, appropriate, um, I did take advice uh, from Tori and uh, I did put together my program. Great. And I uh, filmed my videos about two weeks ago. So I'm waiting for them to return. And I'm really proud and happy about uh, what we put together and as soon as I have it um, back from the videographer I'm going to share it with you so I can get some more of your your magic and, and guidance to what's my next step absolutely I can't wait I cannot wait it's going to go off beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you 
that's a massive achievement, Hazel. Incredible foundation piece in automating yourself and scaling and sharing your gifts with the world. Thank you for telling us all in here. Big claps on the mics. <laughs> yes, I'm really happy. The videographer and the makeup artist and the, and the people that were supporting the the whole film, the whole filming of the of the course, um, were really learning a lot. And they left. They were like, "Wow, we really like can't wait to go home and do what you said to do <laughs> with those videos." <laughs> you are born to lead, Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, honestly, um, Emily and Ingrid, like, uh, I'm your client, and um, I honestly, you know, really recommend you to anybody that's up to um, putting out a program and wanting to make a difference in the world. You're a great support. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Do we have another question? I got the, I got the misty eyes bag. Thank you. Yes. Um, now we know Alessandra already, and she's also in our program. So I, I hope you don't mind, Alessandra, but I'm going to um, go to Theano, who is next in line, to ask her question. Um, so, Theano, please unmute yourself. Um, please say, Ingrid, my question is, thank you so much. Hi, everyone here. Thank you for having me up. Um, my question is, so I currently run three businesses. Um, but my passion is my coaching that I do. And a lot of, you know, I invest in tons of courses, coaches, whatever, you know, and it's interesting that I, I get the feedback that, oh, you know, just stick to the high end one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you know, the scaling, it takes too much time, energy, effort. Um, but I'm curious to more, so my question is, what's your take on that? Because my gut's kind of really leaning me towards the scaling where I can serve more and reach more and just have a better impact. But, um, yeah, getting some mixed messages about that. So I would love your take on that. Thank you, Thiana. Is it Thiana? Thiano? Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, where are you? Where is that from? Where, what's the ethnicity of that name? It's different. Greek. Greek. Beautiful. Greek. Oh, beautiful. Wise yeah, woman. I think it means that you're of God, right? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Okay. So I love the question and I completely disagree with that. Um, I would literally be a burnt out wreck of a woman um, if I had stayed in one on one to one work. I just literally, it is unsustainable. Even if you see all these um, big marketing people, other coaches online talking about your 100K packages and just and selling all of that, which is usually one on one work or a service delivery, delivery model with one on one. I wouldn't want that if someone was paying like you know i wouldn't it just wouldn't want if, to sell those types of services or those types of massive packages and then often when people are thinking of scalable they're thinking about maybe kind of doing a cheaper or like a really a much cheaper product like if someone was going to work with me one-on-one -on -one, it would be my our products like we have a three thousand or thirty five hundred dollar price point product a five thousand and then a twelve and a twenty and they are all group what we would call high end so if I, you know, sell, you know, 50 spots a month that are, say, a $3,000 product, that's 150K a month. Uh, we sell more than that because we sell all the different tiers. But you can do that really quickly. You can take your private offer that you have now and convert it into a group high-end offer and probably be paid exactly the same amount, but be paid over and over again because you've, you're serving one to many at once. Um, the level of content and information that, that people are able to get in that level like so many people will go oh yeah but i'm not getting one-on-one -on -one. i really want to work one-on-one -on -one. if you do this um if you deliver it in a way you set up the structure really well you're able to give people epic transformation a deep level of support in the group format you're able to make 10, 20, 30, even 100 times more and you're able to reach people and you're able to actually have, like we have, I have a team of coaches now that work under me. Um, I have a team of healers and mystics and kinesiologists and mindset people that work with me because doing all of that on my own, like trying to do the energy side and the mindset side and then the strategy side, whilst I can do both is exhausting. So it allows you to bring in a team, have support yourself and also then create that scalable, sustainable uh, business because working one-on-one -on -one for, for me isn't sustainable. If I want to go on holiday, if I want to break, if I want to take um, a month off, I can, 
with this business model. But um, my prices aren't like super cheap. You know, I I do have like a, a seven dollar product with a lead magnet. I do have a ninety seven dollar a month membership. But most of our products are at like the thirty five hundred and up. Um, but we make sure that we offer epic transformation through this special thing that well, it's not special, but we, people say, oh, Ingrid, you're so generous. So what we do is we, even in our cheaper products, we have three to four live coaching calls delivered every single week. So, you know, if no matter what time zone people are on, um, as we're scaling and growing, you know, we're making sure that people actually get direct feedback. Uh, we use Google Docs and we actually look at people's offers and things like that. And you're able to set that up for yourself as well. So I'm sharing this with you to say, I totally disagree agree with what they're saying. And your gut instinct is right on the money. I mean, wouldn't you rather, I mean, how much do you charge right now for your private work, may I ask? You don't it's have about ten grand a month. Ten grand a month. Yes. Per person. Yes. And how many of them are you selling, and how much? How many hours are you doing for that work per month? Um. So it ends up coming to about. So I've had a few, probably yeah, only a few, and it's probably hmm, three, four, three to four three to five hours a week mm -hmm. um but the thing is you know as part of like uh, there would be a three hour intensive to start at, you know at the beginning of the month they'd be you know in a car going to pick them up breakfast in their car you know uh a dozen ro you know roses sent to them after like a very much about the experience and them really feeling in the luxury of their own value that they're investing mm -hmm. in this work um so, but I, I realized for me, the amount of work, energy, and effort yes. of recruiting that market, yes. um, you know, I, I, especially running three businesses, yes. um, it, it's just, it, it's a lot. And, you know, I do feel a little challenged because a lot of my work is on intimacy and relationship where I my gut again tells me that when you create the right container, um, it's not threatening for people to be in that space, at, even if they are at a high level. Um, but, you know, I get some feedback being like people who are, you know, high level or high profile um, don't want to be in a group setting. Which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I hear where I you're coming agree. from. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's that. Um, but then later on, if you want to, hey, you could have two different offers. You could have a very high level. I know that you've got a lot of businesses, so I'd have to brainstorm this more. But you've got a, you could have a very high level, but you don't necessarily need to be the person that's always running all of it. You might need to get another healer, coach, mentor, counselor in your, you know, on your team, so that you're not the one doing like all of it or you could deliver it in different ways where I don't know what your personal life is and whether you have children and whatnot but for example you could say that it could be a six-month intensive where you do um, like a two two day sort of immersion with a, either one-on-one -on -one or with a couple I don't know if you can get away but there's different ways of structuring it and it could be even for that it could be um, I don't know I'd have to re really think about it but if and with this 10k a month is it like 10k a month ongoing is there like is it actually a 50k offer like is it a 100k offer or is it how how do you structure this no, 10 um so with those two people it was 10k a month um ongoing um but then i was like okay um just what i was putting into that mm. i was like okay i felt i was um I guess I'm just going to be honest saying proving myself yeah. so I would be delivering in yes. a lot of yes. areas uh, because I really, you know, the integrity of making sure people feel, you know, feel worth it and the transformation that they're getting. And yes, this, you know, my last client who did pay me that she was like thanking me over and over again for the experience, you know, um, she was a woman that just, you know, Korean culture, very closed views about sexuality and didn't even know how she'd have a baby with her husband she's been married you know with 15 years because had sex a dozen half a dozen times <laughs> and then 
at the end of our experience together, two months later, she's calling me, telling me she's pregnant, and um, that was priceless to her, right? Just Yes, absolutely. We worked through Absolutely. So, I will tell you this much, Theano. Um, I would love to at some point, um, but really sitting down, you can sit down by yourself and really look at how can I take this experience and make it more one to many. And then you could have like a VIP level as well. Like I feel like there's a couple of different levels that you could have. And then also doing beautiful, um, maybe more like group retreats as a VIP immersion where it's not so much one-on-one and you can have other practitioners turn up to that event to support as well and have little um, private little sessions when you know pockets and she could have like taken this beautiful divine client that you just talked about to the side and have a one-on-one session where where you've got another practitioner there to support but doing uh, beautiful work together with women in group would be also a really other powerful way of doing it what we also do help a lot of our clients with too which is something to maybe consider down the line is packaging up your ip process to teach to other practitioners. So I have women who are like doulas now doing 20, 30, 40K a month. I've got other people doing 100K a month plus. Um, t- uh, I've got a client um, who's got a business like teaching women on dance and therapy and movement. But what we're doing a lot with the work is doing teacher training. So you're teaching other women to be, do the work that you're doing and giving them a process to follow. Does that make sense? So you would take your IP process of helping people with their relationships and sexuality and inst- intimacy and connection and communication and creating a beautiful process where you could take people into a, like a 10K uh, six month container or one year container to learn your process and to become a practitioner under your brand. Does that make sense? Yeah, like I've thought of that, like part of, um, you know, the branding that I do have is like to, you know, unlock your own intimacy code and mm-hmm. taking transforming ordinary love, you know, um, ordinary, ordinary intimacy into first class love. I love it. And and that could be anything, then, Theano, from a teacher training to a 2K course. You could have a different one that's like a 5K, a 10K. It could be a beautiful mastermind. You could do group masterminds with husband and wives together. You never, like, I don't, you could you can create, I think when you get creative, and I know that you're talking about all the barriers to entry of people that um, may not want to publicly share all their stuff, but I think there's so many different things that you could do with your brand to monetize it better and not be so draining because I think that work that you're doing is beautiful and I can say it see that you care so much and I'm not saying to just throw it out but I do think the sustainability and especially because you have um, a lot of other things going on creating something that's very structured and beautiful that you could do one to many would be incredible for you yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. The, uh, one more question I do mm-hmm. have around when you say having a team of different practitioners yes. come to my mind a lot because yes. I really per- like sharing my resources and that's part of my own magic of what's brought me to where I am. How do you compensate them? Like, is it a cut? Is it a commission or is it? Okay. Good question. I um, compensate my other coaches and healers. And it depends. It, um, some people are full-time employees and some are contractors. So, um, it, when I first started out, I couldn't afford to make someone an import, like pay them a full time salary to be a coach. Uh, so it was just contractor fees. So I have a few different healers, mystics, counselors. I have other business coaches, marketing coaches, sales coaches, copy coaches. Most of them are paid uh, either like a monthly retainer, depending on how many classes they do, and then an hourly rate if they if they have to do any additional private work with clients so it could be anywhere from 150 200 and up depending on might be even 500 an hour it depends on how experienced the um the coach um or the consultant is does that make sense yes yes no that's mm. great thank you thank okay. you yeah no, given me a lot to think about i appreciate it my, very much my pleasure thank you for sharing i love your work thank you mm-hmm. first too thank you Hello, does anyone else have a question? Hey, sorry, Devil. My mute wasn't working. We've got the gorgeous Liz here. Thank you, Liz, for unmuting yourself and thank you, Theano. Hi, thank you, guys. Um, one, I do want to say I did your seven or I, I purchased the seven dollar honor. Oh yes, the rich goddess activation. <laughs> it was it was fun. 
fucking amazing thing. Well, excuse my language. It was awesome. Yeah, I was asking Dan before. Thank you, Liz, if I'm allowed to swear. And I said, this is going to be torture for me watching every PNQ. <laughs> so I'm glad that you broke it first, Liz. It is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really is. Like, it just made me, you know, up until that point, I mean, I was I was running my business. I mean, I, I would say I wasn't taking it serious because now I understand. Mm -hmm. and, like, after listening to it, um, it really started making me look at the money aspect of the business mm -hmm. and, and taking it serious. I think up until that point, I was just kind of, I'm going to do it and get money as it comes, but not really putting an emphasis of how is this actually bringing in the return. Um, and so my question is, um, well, it's a little bit of a statement and then a question. So how I've been getting my clients now, they've all been referrals. I think I have one client that wasn't a referral, but all of them have been like referrals from other coaches who are like, oh, my client can definitely, definitely utilize your services which is amazing because it, it creates that sense of like trust. And I'm glad that other people would recommend their clients to me. But the problem is that it's not consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it's, it's referrals, there's no consistent monthly revenue. And it's like, I'll have a, like a week where I'm bringing in six clients and then I'll have like three months where I bring in none. Um, and so I've done all the trainings. I mean, I don't even know how many coaches I've invested in at this point. Um, and so I know all the things, right? Like you have to like create a Facebook group or create, um, Instagram content. And it's just, I think none of it feels aligned mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if it, it's just like, I know the things to do, but then as I start doing it, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, creating a Facebook group and doing Instagram content is kind of like a very, it's a very organic marketing measure. It's sort of like just getting started. Um, you can have great success there, but you do have to constantly be nurturing that and doing that content. So my uh, advice would be looking at, well, first of all, Liz, I'd love to know a little bit more about what, what do you do currently? Like what is your coaching um, niche and area of expertise? Um, so I'm able to see blueprints of people. So we have the four bodies and I can see each individual blueprint and then essentially figuring out what their, what their purpose is and how they need to kind of realign to that. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the clients I get a lot of times they're, you know, it's, it's either they're in one or two categories, they're healers and then they want to step into their gifts. So I can see the blueprint of how the gifts are meant to work and kind of what needs to be tweaked and why they're not stepping into that. Okay. Or there's, there's a lot of medical intuitive stuff that have come to me re more so recently um, because healers, as we know, they, they don't necessarily get the cues from their body. So by the time they come to me, they're dealing with like colitis or migraines or back pain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I guess the, ex my gift is seeing blueprints and then the expression of that is kind of been changing. It's been a moving target. Mm -hmm. Well, probably as you're developing your own gifts deeper and deeper, it's going to keep shifting and morphing as you go deeper into the brilliance and uh, power of your work, which is great. Um, it's interesting that you say, you know, that it doesn't sort of feel right. It doesn't feel aligned, um, which is, you know, maybe because you feel like there's a lot of energy or effort. I'm not sure. But for me personally, sometimes when we're starting to work with a client or a student, you know, um, just helping them get visible and creating content. It's a big energy for them. It's a lot of shifting and changing and fear release work in order to even just get to that stage. But when I'm really helping someone who's really like ready to just go, it really is, I think funnels are really, I mean, it might sound very sort of basic, I don't know, but having a funnel that really draws people in beginning to actually run traffic eventually, like really, and if you can do it earlier in the piece and get it right on point, then it's, it's awesome because, you know, people that currently are searching for you, Liz, uh, you start to run traffic into a beautiful uh, lead magnet, which I, when I'm looking at funnels, it's really like 
creating something juicy for someone like I did with Rich Goddess Activation. You're like working out, do I like this person? Are they the real deal? You could create your own $7 product where you're sort of beginning to like show the blueprint of what you do and talk about purpose activation and you could do your own. I mean, you can have free funnels and then I also got free funnels. I got a free quiz, but really that $7 product of mine, I'll just let you know something. It usually takes me about 21 days for someone to go from buying that $7 product to becoming a client. Now that's pretty good, right? So what, why is that happening? Because you're giving, they're already serious. They're already a buyer. They have, it's only a small amount of money. They don't have to part with much cash, but you're already getting them into sort of like ha- getting into that relationship with you. They buy that, they buy that product uh, and then you're able to really showcase your work at a deeper level and then help them go to that next level. So right now, instead of waiting for a referral, and if you get those referrals, wonderful, but they're icing on the cake, right? Of a really solid marketing strategy that's automated. So I think I could hear some kids in the background. So imagine kids are playing, you're at the park, you're traveling, um, you're talking to me right now, and you've got ding, 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 people coming in, buying your product, and then when, during that journey and during that 21 days, looking at seriously becoming a client of yours, that's when you get to like get into what I would call the liquid gold um, sort of, you know, energy field of client attraction. Um, does that make sense, Liz? It makes sense and it feels right because it's almost like creating the right container. And I think that's, I guess that's Absolutely. And later on, Liz, you know, you, cause you sound like you do a lot of great, beautiful private work and anyone who's doing private work right now, you don't have to throw that out. You can absolutely do the private, but I would also look at having your group high end offer as well. Like, you know, looking at doing your own group high end so that you could have one more, one to many, because when you get your marketing, a lot of people complain about, oh, I don't have enough clients and this isn't working for me and blah, 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 blah. But when you get the right structure on fire and you've, you've got your messaging and you run, you learn how to run ads and you learn how to do your cheaper taste tester products, like the $7 product we're both talking about now. And um, you've got your sales structure there and you've got the right offer with the right price point that offers epic value. It will work and it does work and it's, it's, it's beautiful, right? So um, does that make any sense? It's like just about getting it all those sort of key little points together. And right, right now, I mean, you could go away and start crafting and writing out your own uh, seven fig- $7, I was going to say seven figure offer, $7 offer um, tonight, even Liz. Definitely. And yes, yeah, speaking to Yeah, seven figure. You're a seven figure diva. It is done. It is done. It is done. (laughs) Do a seven dollar product to create seven figures. There you go. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. I want to acknowledge we're coming close to our time, so I want to acknowledge all our incredible visitors in the room today. I see, I, we see you all, we love you all. Thank you to the incredible question askers, our beautiful moderators, Ingrid, Chris, Daniel, Sandy, Hazel. Thank you for being here with us and supporting And Alessandra us. and Liz and everyone, oh, Athena, I see you. And please bear with me, everybody. I've never really done this before and I'm a bit fresh. Um, but I hope I'll get much more proficient at the clubhouse format. <laughs> so thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you all. And thank you so much to what it takes to run a $1 million business club. If you are not a member of the club, please join the club. Please follow all of our moderators, support the Facebook growing community. Yeah, and can I also give a thanks? Community to contribute to. Thank you, Emily. And I just also want to acknowledge Dan who, um, We've just um, hit number 50 uh, in the entrepreneurial category in three weeks with my podcast, uh, which is called The Divine Fem Money Show. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention that, but I just want to give a uh, shout out to the divine uh, Dan, who has helped uh, with some of the production of the um, podcast. 
Uh, Dan, you've been amazing and thank you for helping us with today. Um, it's really beautiful when you meet incredible people online who are really heart-centered, who honor their word. And Dan has definitely been that for us and Emily and Chris, my partner as well, and Emily, my partner. So I just wanted to acknowledge you, Dan. Thank you for all his name, full name here is Daniel just there. Just want to say thank you, Daniel, for your support. You all are amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Okay, all blessings. Right. Thank Everyone you, Emily. Down the room. Make sure you follow the mods, follow each other, follow each other on Instagram, hit each other up in DMs, all the connections you need to make. Uh, yep, get on to Rich Goddess Activation if you've never done it. Go to ingridana.com forward slash Rich Goddess or is it RGA? Huh? I have no idea. Um, if you want to DM um, either Emily or I, we can always send you the link to that $7 product that was mentioned. You <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, thank you, everybody. Blessings. <laughs> So gorgeous, if you've been listening and you're ready to grow your booming, beautiful online business or you're ready to take your current business into a whole other divine, juicy stratosphere, schedule a call with one of my strategists. We're gonna map out a four-part plan to radically grow your revenue and your impact with authenticity, grace, and proven strategy. I cannot wait to explore how we can make magic together. So apply for your complimentary strategy call now at ceodivachat.com.